In this lecture, we're going to talk about a business concept called marginal value. And this concept applies to a wide variety of business concepts. We can talk about marginal revenue, marginal cost, marginal utility, marginal profit. To make the discussion kind of more concrete, I'm going to talk specifically about marginal revenue. But just in the back of your mind, keep in mind that this applies to a, a whole host of different topics as well. So when we talk about marginal revenue, what we mean is how much revenue we would generate from selling one more of an item. All right, so I have an example here. I have this very basic revenue function. R is the revenue. X is the number of units sold. And you, you've probably seen some, some similar to this before. Uh, what this is telling me just at first glance is that the company is selling this product for $12.50 each. So for example, the revenue generated by selling 10 items would be 12.50 times 10 or $125. All right, then the revenue generated from selling, for example, 11 items would be 1250 times 11, which comes out to uh, $137.50. So notice what I did here. I picked two consecutive numbers, right? I, I, I picked 10 units versus 11 units, because this is going to let me see what the marginal revenue for 10 units is. The marginal revenue is the difference between two successive x values. So the marginal revenue here is going to be 137.50 minus 125, which is $12.50. So what does this tell me? All right, what, what this tells me in business terms is the margin is if I sell 11 units, I'm going to make $12.50 more than I would if I sold 10 units. All right, that's, that's the marginal revenue concept, is how much you would make from selling one more of an item. And now notice here, right, this $12.50 matches this $12.50 up here, and that's not a coincidence. All right, when, when the function that you're dealing with is a linear function, like the revenue example I picked here, then the marginal revenue is going to be equal to the slope, or it's going to be, uh, in business terms, it's going to be uh, the cost per unit, how much you're selling the item for. Now, that's not going to be the case for every function, right? And we'll see on the, on the next couple of slides that if the revenue function is more complicated, then the situation is a little more complicated and we're going to have to get more creative. All right, so let's take a look at a more complicated concept. I have uh, a new revenue function here. Now the revenue is equal to 100x minus 0.5x squared. And I've graphed that here so you can see visually what's going on. This is what you, you hopefully expected to happen, right? This revenue function here is a quadratic equation and the a term is negative. So you expect the graph to be a parabola opening down, which is what we have here. Right. Now, in business terms, you might think this is kind of odd. How can the revenue drop off as I sell more units? Shouldn't the revenue always increase? Well, it, think about a situation where you're, you're putting product out there and, and you're selling these products. And eventually you get to a, to a point that the marketing people call market, penetra uh, market saturation. Right? That's the point where everybody in your market who wants your product has your product, right? There, there are, for practical purposes, there are no new customers. There's nobody out there looking to buy whatever it is you're selling. And at this point, if you want to sell more of your product, one way you can make this happen is by reducing your price. Because if you reduce your price, then people who may not have been interested in buying it at the original price 
well, they, they might think that your new price is reasonable, right? But, you know, when, when you lower your price, sometimes that, that's, you lower your price, you increase your sales volume, but sometimes that's still not enough to cause your, your revenue to continue to rise, and you may experience this kind of situation where your revenue drops off. All right, so I want to think about what's going on with the marginal revenue in this situation. And to do that, what I've done here on this next slide, I, ju I just blew up the part of the graph between 94 and 100. So, so we've got kind of a, a bigger graph here that I can draw on. And what I want to do is I want to think about uh, the marginal revenue for 97 units. In other words, I'm, I'm asking myself, if I, if I sell 98 units, how much more am I going to make? How much more can I make from selling 98 versus 97? All right, so you're on the, on, the pre, on the first slide. To find that marginal revenue, what I did is I calculated R of the first value, 97, R of the next value, and then I subtracted them. All right, so visually what I'm talking about is this. I've got, uh, I've got 97, that's this point on the graph, and I've got 98, that's this point on the graph. So if I subtract these two y values, I get this. All right, and I could do that. I could get out my calculator and I could I could figure out what r of 97 and r of 98 are, and that would be fine. Uh, but that's going to get a little tedious, especially if I'm trying to do this for a lot of different numbers. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw the tangent line here at that point that I'm interested in, all right? And I want you to look at the value of the tangent line at 98. And I want you to notice here that this distance, the distance between my tangent's value and 97 is really close to the value, to the distance between the function's value and 97. So what this tells me is my, the tangent line, if I use the tangent line instead, that's given me a, actually a really, a really good approximation of the marginal value. All right, and now I want you again to think back to that first slide. If we're looking at a linear function like this tangent line, it's a line, it's linear, then the marginal value is just the line's slope. All right, so this is where I'm going I'm to have to pull out a little calculus. All right, I have this function r of x equals 100x minus 0.5x squared. And this is our revenue. And I'm going to find the derivative of this function. All right, remember, again, referencing our calculus here, right? The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So this is going to be 100 minus 2 times 0.5 is 1. So this is going to be just 100 minus x. All right, so this, this r prime, this derivative, is the slope of the tangent line. And the slope of the tangent line is going to give me my approximate marginal revenue. All right, so I want you to, to just kind of step back here, look at the big picture, think about what we did. All right, I'm trying to find a function that tells me the marginal revenue for this revenue model that I have here. And to do that, I'm going to take the derivative because the derivative is the slope of the tangent line and the marginal revenue for a line is just the slope. So that, and that's what I have here. R prime is the slope of that tangent line. So what does this tell me? Let, let's work with this here a little bit. Let's say I look at R prime of, well, I was talking about 97, right? R prime of 97. This is 100 minus 97, that's $3. All right, so what does this tell me? This tells me that selling 
97 unit, uh, excuse me, selling 98 units is going to net me three more dollars in revenue than I would have gotten from selling 97. All right, let's, let's look at another example. Let's look at our prime of 100, the marginal revenue for selling 100 units, right? That's 100 minus 100. That's zero, All right? So again, what does this tell me? This tells me that the marginal revenue from selling uh, 101 units versus 100, the chain, uh, I'm going to make zero dollars more. And remember, because if you think about the graph, it's not really zero. This is giving us an approximation. But this is an important value because this tells us where the function turns around. This tells us where the revenue starts to drop off, All right? Starts starts to decrease. So, uh, what are, what did we do here? Um, we we develop a good method for getting an approximate value of the marginal revenue. And I, and I want to remember, remind you what I said at the beginning, right? This applies to almost any business concept. I could use the same concept to find marginal cost. I could use it to find uh, marginal utility, marginal Profit, right? all of those business concepts. If I can, if I can find a function like my R up here that describes them, I can find the corresponding marginal values by looking at that function's derivative. 